study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com okay exodus chapter 20 starting at verse 4 it says, you shall not make for yourselves an idol nor an image of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow yourself down to them nor serve them for I, Yahuwah, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. Generational curses. And showing loving kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments, generational blessings. You shall not misuse the name of Yahuwah your God, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless who misuses his name. So I guess that has to do with obeying Yah's word. Well, we also said too that not only is it talking about his name, but it's also talking about how we live as followers of Yahuwah. We, we're bearing his name in this walk. So we blaspheme him just by, you know, going against what he teaches us and, you know what I mean? So. Amen. I know why I went to that passage now. The reason why I went to this passage is because of verse, where is it? Verse six is the reason why I went here. Yahuwah said, Exodus 20, verse four, uh, Exodus 20, verse six, Yahuwah said, and showing loving kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Key words, those who love me, Yahuwah, the creator of, of the universe, and keep my commandments. There's only one other person in scripture that spoke this way. Guess who it was? Mashiach. Messiah. Nobody else spoke this way. This is God, the God of the universe, the Elohim, almighty Elohim. Speaking to Moses, saying, I'm the one that's to be loved, and my commandments are the ones that are to be kept. All of a sudden, we have a man named Yahusha, born of a, a virgin, walking on the earth, and he walks around saying things like this. John chapter 14, verse 15. This is Yahusha speaking, saying, if you love me, Keep my commandments. If Yahusha was not God, he would never say those kinds of words. He would say, if you love me, keep his commandments. Or if you love God, keep his commandments, if anything. Yeah. Right? Next one, verse 21 of the same chapter. One who has my commandments and keeps them, that person is one, is one who loves me. Here he goes again. One who loves me will be loved by my father. Here's where all the Unitarians, the people who deny the deity of Yahusha, the, the Unitarians love this part. They skip the other parts, but they hone in on this part where now he's, he's making a difference between himself and the father. They're like, oh, you see, he's not the father because he's saying to the father and He's making himself different. Yeah, but are you, you, you keep missing the oneness, the scriptures that point to his unique oneness. He said it was his commandments. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and will reveal myself to him. Verse 23 of the same chapter. Yahusha answered him, if a man loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. That's my favorite verse. 
because now he brings it all together. I and the Father are literally the same person. We are going to come and make our home with him. Do you know what that's talking about? That's talking about when the spirit of Yah comes into us, when we are baptized and immersed by the spirit of Yah. Now he's in our temple. Thank you, Carlos. He's in our temple. Which spirit is in our temple? Do we have two different spirits in our temple? Do we have the God Yahusha and the God Yahuwah, two different gods inside of us? Or do we have one spirit, one God living inside of us? We have one. I love this. John chapter 14, verse 24. He who doesn't love me doesn't keep my words. The word which you hear isn't mine, but the Father's who sent me. And then the Unitarians come again and say, oh, you see, it's not his words. He just said it's not his. He said it was his. And then he's saying it's not his. It's his, but it's not his. What is he talking about? How is it his, but not his at the same time? My only explanation to that is the person that gets credit for those words are God who exists outside of time and space. Yahusha as a human, as a human, somebody who has bones, flesh, and blood within him, that didn't begin until 0 AD, the year 0 AD, when Yahusha was born as a human being. So it's not the human being that gets the ultimate credit because the human being came way later in history, right? So the human, the man, Yahusha, it's not his commandments, but it is the spirit that is behind that flesh, that's inside that temple, which existed before he was a human. So it is his and it's not his all at the same time. How? Because Yahusha is man and he's God all at the same time. So there's sometimes he's going to be speaking from his humanity. And there's going to be times where he's speaking from his deity. The deity means his character as far as like his spiritual identity. Right? So I need you guys. I'm trying to help you guys with this. You, you, know, you guys know I always try to help you in understanding the oneness between the father and the son but you're gonna have the enemy out there fighting us. They're gonna fight us and try to use specific scriptures. They wanna ignore these scriptures and they just wanna focus on these that separates the father and the son, but they don't wanna focus on the scriptures that unites them as a, literally as one person. Yahuwah in the Old Testament never said, keep the commandments of my coming Messiah, keep his words. He said, keep my words. All right. All right. Exodus chapter 10, verse 24. Is that where we're at? Nope. Yeah, we talked about the herds, the flocks. and mm -hmm. Verse 25. But Moses said, you must also give us sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to Yahuwah our God. Our livestock also shall go with us, not a, a hoof. Not a foot shall be left behind, for we must take some of them to serve Yahuwah our God, and even we do not know with what we must serve Yahuwah until we arrive there. But Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. This is really important. Verses 27 to 29, for me, shares the purpose of why Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart. There's a reason. Verse 27, but Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, get away from me. Take heed to yourselves and see my face no more. For in the day that you see my face, you shall die. So Moses said, you have spoken well. I will never see your face again. Uh, sorry, I got, this, I got this mixed up with another chapter. All right. this, in another chapter, next chapter, I think 11, it's going to tell you at the end. Yahuwah hardened his heart so that they can see Yahuwah's miracles, all right? Um, so if Pharaoh wasn't so resistant, these miracles would not have happened. These plagues and all these things would not have happened, right? Everything would have been cool. If you would have just let Yah's people go, there would have been no problems. 
people would have said, oh, that was easy. There's nothing really special about the God that we serve. I mean, it is special that we were able to be set free from slavery. I think, I think a lot of people will be celebrating for a long time, right? But what if you're saved from slavery and bondage, but while you go out, you go out with frogs and locusts filling the land and the bloody waters and the darkness and the storms and the right all these things that our god did wow and then you end it with a banger you split the red sea open and you actually swallow up our enemies yeah that stuff that's something like that shouldn't be forgotten very easily but you make me think about history now where slavery was um you know, segregation all that has ended within the u.s obviously there's still racism but the larger part of slavery mm -hmm. and you know people look at man well martin luther King Jr. did this, and Malcolm X did this, and Rose Parks did this, and and obviously very grateful for for them because I mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to be here, wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for yep. for you who are using mm -hmm. um, these vessels. Yeah, none of us colored but, um, folk would be on Zoom right now. Yeah. We were still living in those days. Yeah, but um, we'd be out working mm -hmm. right now. But the aspect of actually you who, like you said, using plays and and doing something mighty, where you know just a few generations. We'll be able to say, oh, well, he did this in this land. People don't give credit. I think, I think, as he was saying earlier, people give credit to man before they give credit to, um, to God. Mm -hmm. So, just made me think about that. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it.